So now we are going to our first session, ICT Tools for Modern Classroom Teaching by Ms. Dania Lambo. And now I invite Dr. Adida K. Umni for introducing the speaker. Thank you. A respected principal, Dr. Chako Josvi. Today's speaker, Ms. Rania Lampo, global educator, author, neuroscience researcher, and STEM instructor. Dr. Sindo Jacob, coordinator, Chavara Center for Teaching Excellence and Educational Innovation. IQAC coordinator, Dr. Lipson KV, and all the participants of faculty development program, a warm good evening to all. I'm highly honored and feel privileged to have been given the opportunity to welcome and introduce our speaker. Rania Lambau is a global educator, STEM instructor, ICT teacher trainer, neuroeducation researcher, international keynote speaker, and author of scientific books for kids and global peace ambassador in Greece. Currently, she is a STEM instructor at Greek Astronomy and Space Company, and she is also working at the Greek Ministry of Education at the Directorate of Educational Technology and Innovation, where she writes STEM projects for Greek schools. She has been awarded many national and international prizes. She is a Global Teacher Award 2020 winner and a Global Teacher Prize finalist 2019. Recently, she has been selected as Global Icon 2020, featured in Passion Vista magazine. She is the founder and international coordinator of many innovative international projects that focus on the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals described in 2030 Agenda. For, furthermore, she is a social activist, a global peace ambassador, senior advisor of United Nations Peacekeepers Federal Council. So I would like to request our speaker, Ms. Rania Limpo, to enlighten us with a session on ICT tools for modern classroom teaching. I welcome you, ma'am, to our session. Warm well, greetings from Greece. I'm uh, very, very honored and very happy to be invited in this um, a very interesting and uh, I, I'm sure very enriching and constructive uh, faculty development program. I would like to congratulate all the organizers and I warmly thank uh, Dr. Tipisa Sikuma for his kind invitation. It's a huge honor for me to be invited by, the, by this uh, renowned scientist. So today we will um, explore um, the really fascinating field of educational technology in order to see how we can transform uh, teaching into a viable and um, engaging uh, learning experience, how we can um, uh, approach all these um, innovative um, uh, aspects of STEM education, because STEM education is uh, the future of education now. And finally, we will describe um, uh, how AI, artificial intelligence can also um, change uh, the educational sector. So may I share my presentation? <clears throat> Can you see now my presentation? Yes, ma'am. This is Can you see also the, uh, the change of slides? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, educational technology is actually this field that um, investigates the process of analyzing, designing, developing, and implementing and evaluating all these uh, uh, learning materials, the learners, the instructional environment in order to improve uh, teaching and learning. And why educational technology education is important? Because it helps uh, today's teachers to integrate new technologies, new tools. Uh, uh, because teachers are able more to upgrade and improve um, uh, what we call um, uh, learner centeredness in the classroom. It enables teachers to engage the students in unique, innovative, and equitable ways. And we are also at the same time able to expand our network and connect with other teachers and educators nationally and globally. 
and uh, you know, currently educational uh, systems all around the world um, face the challenge of using um, information communication technologies to provide the students with the necessary tools, the skills, and knowledge required in the 21st century. I think you all know about uh, communication, collaboration, digital literacy, uh, critical thinking, problem solving. All these are uh, the major um, uh, skills to 21st century. So with the arrival of these technologies, the emphasis um, uh, uh, is now uh, we shifted from what we call teacher-centered approach towards the training focused approach. So um, if these uh, ICT tools actually are an educational innovation at the moment and allow changes in the daily work of the classroom and the teaching learning uh, process. Already in um, uh, 1998, the UNESCO report of education uh, had described the impact of ICT tools on convenient methods of teaching, and it had also predicted the transformation of the teaching process and learning and the way in which teachers and students access knowledge and information. Uh, so, um, in this, uh, um, from this point of view, uh, the strategic objectives are always to improve the quality of education, how through the diversification of content and methods, the promotion of experimentation, innovation, dissemination, and sharing of information and good practices, the formation of uh, learning communities and the stimulation, of course, of the dialogue at, uh, in order to um, promote uh, and uh, put forward new policies. Um, so the role of teacher changes now is not anymore. Uh, the sages who knows everything is actually a guide, a facilitator, a mentor. Uh, and uh, uh, the learner is the protagonist of the class because he is the one who must be autonomous and work in collaboration with his peers. So uh, ICT uh, tools are very important to the training, and not only in musical training, but throughout our professional lives. Uh, because these tools um, uh, favor, um, uh, especially schools that do not have libraries of teaching materials, uh, allow entering the new world of, uh, full of uh, easily accessible information for teachers and students. We facilitate uh, the learning environment which adapts uh, to new uh, strategies that allow the creative and fun uh, cognitive development in traditional areas of the curriculum. Uh, and this uh, also develops the capacity for understanding, uh, for promoting the process of what we call meaningful learning uh, and relevant learning to students. And of course, how the development of new ways of teaching and learning, uh, because teachers can uh, learners can acquire more and better knowledge, um, uh, as well as exchange their ideas. So this is uh, uh, these are an essential tools uh, in offering the students a comprehensive education, uh, enabling them to develop all the digital skills and uh, abilities. You know that during the, the COVID pandemic, um, the global rate of um, educational access. Uh, the loads grew up to 95 uh, 90 uh, and especially for mobile uh, education apps. And during the pandemic, we have seen uh, um, now here in Greece, uh, we have these problems because there were many teachers who were not able, not even to turn on the computer. They were not able to share a single file. So uh, the positive aspect of uh, this COVID uh, pandemic crisis is that it revealed all the weaknesses of the educational systems all around the world. Um, so um, during this uh, uh, crisis, uh, we have no opportunities now. And uh, <clears throat> these uh, uh, apps, we're going to see many, many uh, tools uh, later. Uh, all these apps will uh, make lectures more efficient. Uh, we improve remote access, for instance, we will see how virtual reality um, it's something that um, can uh, revolutionize uh, also our um, daily uh, educational life. Uh, for instance, uh, virtual uh, reality headsets are becoming increasingly affordable. So, uh, meaning that more and more people can uh, own their own for personal use. Uh, many uh, VR software suppliers do offer smartphone and desktop versions of their simulation. And uh, we can practice behaviors and skills. Why, for instance, if we talk about virtual reality, uh, is ideal for giving learners access to skill-based and behavioral learning opportunities, especially for situations and environments that are dangerous and difficult to replicate in real life. So VR can replicate, for instance, almost to any scenario 
uh, to create challenging realistic simulations, difficult situations, uh, and uh, uh, this way um, uh, we can learn how to react and how to coach students to use strategies, techniques, and behaviors. Actually, it's about transforming education and uh, what are the main functionalities in ICT, of course, digital literacy, personal use, how to manage also administration, but communicate with families also, with the environment, and of course, um, the joint thematic network for the exchange between teachers. So what are these advantages? It's about cost efficiency. They, are, they provide a facility for easy student management. Uh, direct classroom teaching to improve methods of communication, eco-friendly because we reduce the use of the paper, we minimize cost, um, they improve data and financial security. Um, we talk about also better um, uh, awareness uh, about the social impact of technological change, uh, web-based LMS tools, learning management system tools, and uh, um, more opportunities for teachers who can experiment with many digital, especially free digital tools. So, um, it, uh, the bring actual inclusion uh, because that all students can learn uh, from this, uh, can, uh, um, can leverage these tools. So, this opens up new um, uh, problems related, uh, uh, I think, the source problem related to digital divide. Uh, it facilitates online learning, enhances subject learning because these tools that we're going to see are applicable, can be implemented in every cognitive discipline, in every subject. Uh, motivation learning, effective initiation, instruction, encourages collaboration, develops ICT literacy. And what could be uh, the disadvantages of this the fear of uh, unemployment, or uh, we say that, uh, for instance, artificial intelligence that maybe will replace but it's not true. It's actually all the schools complement teachers. They're not here to replace teachers, but they complement their task. Lack of security, privacy, hyperbullying, lines of technology, social media, preparation time, because it's true that um, uh, uh, this um, is needed preparation. Um, so we talk about more creativity, improvement of uh, students' academic performance, some motivation, uh, increase. Uh, <coughs> Um, enhancement of students' responsibility, a sense of autonomy, um, um, collaborative work, and uh, also uh, possibility of uh, dialogue. So as I said before, um, the use is very important. All these tools must be used properly, and they must get the most out of them. So it is necessary that they are used as a means, not as an end. Uh, and, uh, students at the same time must realize that it's a learning tool not a game, because uh, this uh, will be, <clears throat> will have negative impact otherwise. Um, so, uh, during the pandemic, we have seen <clears throat> the possibility of blended learning. First of all, how to use these tools in classroom and need to establish a starting point, uh, to integrate uh, formative evaluation in key areas. Uh, such as literacy and numeracy, evidence based on ICT learning and uh, planning for uh, progress. So, the most popular structure now uh, moving forward is the combination of educational and online delivery, blended learning services to revolutionize mass teaching methods with more flexible uh, access, enhance the more engaging learning experiences, the support for independent and self regulated learning. Uh, so, uh, institutions actually need what we call a, a proactive and strategic approach to blended learning design that um, uh, selects uh, um, expertly designed and curated digital resources on the basis of their ability to support the specific learning outcomes. Um, however, we now know that. Um, Many institutions don't yet fully understand the potential of the wide and ever growing uh, uh, range of education technologies available. So, how are you to decide which will uh, enhance the blend and bring the most benefits for both teachers and um, students? Uh, the primary question uh, should be this one What problem can this technology solve for my learners than other digital solutions cannot? 
Um, for instance, when we talk about blended learning, uh, there are many, many uh, options here. That there is um, a blended play, it's something that uses uh, gamification to support blended learning. I think we all know it partially because this serves uh, what we call flip classroom, allows educators to flip classroom by editing the video and uh, adding questions. It's ideal for self-paced learning. Eduflow, it's another um, uh, learning management system that allows educators to create courses and lessons to track student progress and give great group questions. Flipsnack, Edu, it uh, uh, gives the opportunity to build our own online classroom in which we can add new lessons or uh, upload existing lessons. The Go Class, another mobile app to create digital lessons and blend learning, uh, iCivics, etc. Uh, so many opportunities for blended learning. If we talk about, um, um, I simply saw it's another um, popular site uh, for creating videos and slideshows. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, and ICT, ICT tools are known for developing literacy. We all know this is the video, uh, web creations, design, how to draw in graphic programs, wikis, blogs, so we all know about this. For primary education, animation is important, uh, making video, blogging. Uh, so, what is the tools uh, we need for uh, creating quiz or gamings? I think uh, we all know Flipgrid, and uh, here class tools, and uh, um, Kahoot, which is uh, very fascinating also for adults, um, and uh, also formative, uh, we, uh, that gives us the opportunity to create formative and formative evaluations, as well as active on students' insights in real time. Um, and uh, um, Flickrit, you know, that is this uh, video discussion and the video sharing app uh, free from Microsoft, uh, built for classrooms and uh, beyond. I think uh, that uh, if you have experience with experimenting, you need to experiment with this. Many uh, ICT tools for presentation. For instance, uh, let's like say Advance is very, very popular because it's um, uh, something that uh, uh, offers creation communication tools. Uh, for students, educators to create interactive content and to allow to visualize concepts and communicate creatively. Uh, Prezi, I think you know this, and uh, uh, Mentimeter, that's something that enables the students using live polls, uh, word clouds, uh, quizzes, multiple choice questions, and more, uh, track learning, understanding by asking questions and downloading uh, results, etc. Uh, so, um, this uh, way we have uh, um, many options uh, near port is related to uh, what we call Google Classroom. Google Classroom <clears throat> is a, a virtual uh, classroom that makes uh, learning easy and fun because teachers can integrate uh, educational apps or websites. They can create uh, uh, interactive assignments. Uh, you can include the slideshows, more game, uh, depending on uh, YouTube video. Um, and uh, it's something that allows virtual meetings because we uh, can host uh, parent teaching meeting sessions online from our home. And so it's beneficial for uh, both of us and parents, especially during uh, lockdowns. And um, what are uh, the advantages, of course, of Google Classroom is that um, there is um, access to information anytime, anywhere, uh, multi activity management, uh, an extensive material. Easy grading, which is very important. Enable discussion during classes, communication with parents before, and then uh, what we call eco-friendly uh, way of learning. Uh, so Google Classroom is um, uh, an all-in-one tool for educators, students, and classes can engage to the together lessons and course books. So millions of educators worldwide using this, uh, and uh, this is related to Nearpod. Uh, Nearpod is an um, access partner. Um, uh, actually, um, yeah, educators love uh, a near portal uh, for the, all the many types of instruction they can deliver through a simple platform, eliminating the need to manage many different tools. Um, so, uh, near ports uh, add on uh, integration, something that increases functionality to save educators' time by allowing them to assign lessons, to review reports, uh, to record grades directly within Google Classroom from any device. So students can join Nearpod lessons um, from a classroom without needing to enter the code, for instance. 
And this improves uh, the workflow for educators and students alike. Um, uh, so um, this uh, add uh, important point values, uh, due dates, instructions. Um, we can view post-session reports. We can create an airport lessons in Google Classroom. We can assign lessons on many, many uh, possibilities. Uh, when uh, we uh, have to be creative, this way we have million uh, tools that are available. Uh, especially for storytelling, we have a, a story, but uh, we have Pixton. It's ideal for uh, digital uh, comics. Um, uh, Wordle used to make uh, posters or uh, Canva. Also, it's very popular because it simplifies design and uh, gives the possibility to create designs and flyers and presentations and posters. Um, a picture chart uh, and, uh, um, uh, helps to create a multimedia infographic and uh, um, many other uh, uh, tools. Um, when we talk about online collaboration, uh, you can see here some of them. I think the most uh, popular is Modo. Uh, because it has a characteristic of uh, social media. It seems like um, Facebook, but uh, actually is used for educational purposes. Um, and um, also, uh, the, on know about the Google Docs, the collaborative documents, I uh, give the possibility uh, to work with, for students to work at the same time and collaborate. CISO is a digital portfolio for students, um, and um, Maester uh, Task is a tool for task management uh, and, uh, uh, and the project management. So uh, when we talk about uh, creating videos uh, of a tool, I think Animator is um, very uh, well known, and Ed uh, Puzzle is something that helps us create videos. Uh, go Moodle, uh, Edge Creations, anything that is, you can find anything to be uh, is suitable for you. And many uh, tools for mind mapping and uh, what we call brainstorming and organizing. For instance, uh, we have Google. Google is the best way to share complex information. It's um, uh, a mapping tool that would be used to make sense of complicated things. My dom also is uh, uh, popular. Taxido, Taxido is a word cloud, uh, um, different interesting shapes. Uh, Xmind, Time Toast. Uh, time Toast, you can be used in um, uh, history because it uh, helps us to create timelines. Um, and Think Link uh, helps us to create interactive posters. Uh, time Blinder, also about story about uh, storylines. And Trillo, Trillo, it's very interesting um, and uh, very popular because it's um, a visual collaboration tool used by educators worldwide for easier coursework uh, planning, faculty collaboration, and class organization. And so if uh, you prefer project-based learning, I think it's uh, perfect for you. It has digital boards. You can create uh, um, different boards for assignment, for test papers. And in these boards, also you can create the cards. You can discuss particular topics and these cards. You can invite your students to start and put comments. Um, so many possibilities. Um, uh, study drama uh, offers, uh, for instance, uh, flashcards. And uh, Guru Guru is an ACT tool that uh, offers students digital content, the free tools and data to own the learning. Um, uh, book widgets, offers quick works, uh, worksheets, game simulations in classrooms and with touch books. And uh, um, test it uh, is used to create digital uh, lessons. Other important tools uh, that uh, we mentioned is uh, um, it's PDVL, for instance, is something that is used for augmented reality. It's interesting um, to, to use uh, because it turns everyday images, locations into new opportunities for engagement uh, through uh, augmented realism experiment, experiences. Um, Class 123 is, uh, is a tool for a classroom and classroom management. 
DIGO is a knowledge sharing community, powerful tool, uh, tool for research. Evernote also uh, helps us organize, caption, share notes from everywhere. Glassdoor also is something that um, uh, helps us to keep tracks, track activities and homeworks and behaviors. Uh, iRubric is a comprehensive um, uh, rubric development sharing and assessment tool. Um, and uh, um, uh, Wiser, uh, Wiser Me, um, and voice thread uh, help us send a voice message. And uh, of course, with the conference and software platforms, we need to know about how, about, uh, how Microsoft Teams works, about the Zoom, Google Meet, I think, uh, Cisco here in Greece, the schools uh, um, use uh, Cisco WebEx. And the free video conferencing platforms, uh, Skype, Zoom, Google Handouts, and all these uh, free platforms. At the same time, we have some online coding uh, websites, um, such as Data Camp, Hacker Rank, and Coder Byte. Um, so it's an easy way for uh, teachers and for, to encourage students to motivate students who want to um, um, experiment in uh, coding and programming. Let me talk about some specific subjects, uh, for instance, geography. Uh, well, no, the geography, for instance, is one of complex scientific disciplines. Uh, and it's uh, something that um, um, it's not uh, uh, easy. Uh, so we have to be creative. We have to be creative uh, as educators. We need to create, inspire interest. Uh, about this, so we need to change the pedagogical approach. We use, for instance, Google Maps is uh, one of the real um, game changers for teachers. Um, uh, Online survey uh, contains uh, brilliant kid-friendly activities that encourage students to learn more about geography. Uh, Google Lit Trips uh, it's a blend of literature with geography. Uh, Geo Challenge is a fun and, um, and a challenging geography quiz game with a variety of beautiful graphics and animation to test our geography knowledge. Maps of our world is, uh, uh, is something which is best suited for uh, people of all ages, actually. It's a game-based learning application and a valuable reference tool for those who look to expand their geography knowledge. Uh, Planet Geo, educational games to learn geography. And the GOB uh, challenge also um, a binational geographic is an apple for kids 9 to 13 years old. And they can use it, kids can use it as an assessment tool to test their knowledge. When we talk about mathematics, I think the most popular is um, um, GeoGebra. Uh, well, it's not secret that many students are not passionate about math. So students feel like usually disconnected from maths when what is taught in class, uh, they are unsure of the benefits of math and they're reluctant to pursue careers in the field. We don't know uh, about the STEM gap. Uh, so EdTech uh, here is trying to change these attitudes by providing students with new ways to engage with uh, numbers. So many companies have um, developed these virtual tools. GeoGebra is a free dynamic mathematics software for all levels of education that brings together geometry, algebra, spreadsheets, graphing, statistics, calculus. It's interactive uh, teaching, learning resources, creative can be shared, it can be used uh, by everyone. And other um, uh, tools and apps are stepping stones, comprehensive mathematics, geometry, pattern, uh, pattern shapes, uh, global Gloria, learning math through games. It's a great educational tool. Uh, math playground, the collection of math based games, for instance, for instance, for instance, the students, include math and uh, um, Drambo Box, uh, it's something very known, strategic. And when we talk about uh, physics, of course, we need to affect the simulations, an interactive simulation project of the University of Colorado, uh, it's an open educational resource. Uh, in general, I suggest my students to use open. Uh, educational resources. Um, and another uh, software is uh, electrons, so uh, it's a particle simulator which allows to observe particle interactions to simulate light and grow to create cathode ray tubes and better visualize uh, this concept. Uh, Open explores light, uh, thinking of hands on experiments when we discuss concepts about light can be uh, tough. So, this uh, is an app that helps us demonstrate the properties of light through. Um, easy to comprehend visualizations. Gravity Lab 
that uh, help us to create our own universe, help us to simulate a collision of massive bodies to explain uh, how momentum is conserved. Uh, and uh, um, also uh, particle zoom uh, and other also apps. So we'll talk about many opportunities um, about audio. We have uh, um, does it for instance, a possibility to create many uh, websites um, to create the storylines, timelines set before many uh, free digital tools. Uh, posters, we have a cluster for instance, a possibility to screen capturing, etc. So um, now uh, another um, field which actually very interesting is virtual and augmented reality because. Um, uh, Already, thousands of schools worldwide are delivering the immersive learning and experiencing the benefits of VR in education. Um, uh, so, first of all, we talk about virtual field trips because using VR, uh, students can travel to different cities, counties, and cultures. Um, this uh, offers also a time and cost effective option for schools. Um, and uh, um, it aids to it helps to explore conceptual concepts because understanding a theory based conceptual subject can be extremely challenging for students um, and uh, also um, in this way teachers can genuinely bring a, a conceptual subject to life um, because by allowing uh, students to experience the examine and explore more abstract subjects, they can visualize and engage with the topic in ways that aren't just uh, possible with traditional learning. For instance, if a student learning is about sales, um, it's easier to understand this through a diagram or an animal cell uh, or a detailed interactive 3D model. Um, and uh, develop the computer technology skills uh, because virtual reality offers a perfect opportunity for students to develop technology skills in an exciting and engaging environment. Uh, we can own uh, this way computing skills by building amazing virtual creation and then experience it in all uh, virtual reality. A uh, case here of this is uh, CoSpaces. It's very, very uh, popular software where students can set their imaginations by creating their own 3D uh, virtual worlds. It's the perfect introduction to coding also. Uh, so course spaces, uh, of course, boosts creativity in the classroom. It's uh, um, very important. Um, I think of, uh, if we want to uh, deal with virtual reality, it helps us learn new dimensions um, and uh, uh, we can see here some applications, key applications for game simulations, exhibitions, stories adaptable to any subject, uh, language, STEM encoding, social sciences. Uh, is um, helps to student management, class management, and many galleries of examples. Uh, but we can see if uh, you visit uh, this uh, website. I think Link it's uh, uh, something that. Um, helps also to integrate real life situations into learning uh, this uh, is a tool for creating real life learning and simulations in cloud using uh, interactive media and also helps to build scenarios and uh, um, immersive group learning um, virtual reality is actually a great way to practice group learning and teamwork there are so many brilliant examples of group working uh, with virtual reality in education, of course, it needs special strategies and techniques uh, from the side of uh, educators. Uh, imagine how if we will be able to take our students to the moon to flow through a blood vessel or time travel or meet dinosaurs. And, um, it's very, very interesting. And here we can mention the Avantis Walter. Avantis Walter is uh, a very, is uh, actually the first. Uh, um, uh, thematic uh, park in augmented reality. I don't know if it's here or no, it's not here. Anyway, um, it's a revolutionary learning experience where um, uh, children can explore uh, where it impossible becomes possible. Uh, and uh, of course, uh, blended virtual reality with additional reality. Uh, it's also important this is a combination. 
um, so many uh, opportunities. Uh, VR is an incredible learning tool within smart classrooms. Uh, these classrooms that are confident in the, in the future of education. Uh, as I said before, uh, VR shouldn't be used to replace uh, a lesson. It's not an alternative to teaching. It's a powerful educational tool that teachers can use to enhance their pedagogy, to complement um, uh, their uh, existing strategies. And uh, this way, they can take the teaching to the next level by creating immersive educational experiences into learning. Uh, at the same time, um, we talk, we are, uh, we are on the threshold of the 50 death revolution, and uh, uh, we talk about 50 death revolution now, and uh, new uh, trends also during, uh, after the COVID pandemic, it's the learning can take place anytime, anywhere. Uh, learning will be personalized individual students, so um, students will be um, uh, will uh, will be better in uh, after they have reached a certain master of level they can uh, go further. Students have a choice in defining how they want to learn. That means that when we design the curriculum, the curriculum for the fifth decade evolution, we need to, to take into consideration the needs, their interests, their age, their rhythm. So their opinion should be taken into consideration. Uh, we need more project-based learning and more hands-on experiences. That's why uh, that's why STEM is very important. More hands-on. The theory, the year of theory has gone, and uh, new methods of assessment. Because we have seen during online learning, blended learning, and during the pandemic, all these uh, uh, the traditional uh, evaluation methods uh, have uh, um, have been revised. So um, as uh, we move uh, towards what we call competitive STEM-based skills, uh, we need uh, um, uh, 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 and, uh, we are in the knowledge intensive industry model. We need uh, these STEM-based skills in order uh, to um, meet the problems, problems uh, of our uh, world. Uh, so why is STEM project focus on inquiring student led investigations through open and real life problems and hands on activities? We we'll talk about inquiry, challenge based learning, and problem based learning, and what are the characteristics of STEM educated students? They are problem solvers, they are uh, innovators, they are inventors, they are self reliant, logical thinkers. And if we add the A in STEM, we have uh, STEM. Why? Because we need to emphasize the role of arts alongside with technical skills. And um, so we talk about blended learning. We need technical skills, but at the same time, artistic skills. So the new trend now is integrated STEM, science, technology, engineering, mathematics. Uh, the effort to combine two more cognitive disciplines um, in order to deal, uh, in order to solve a real world problem. All this is inspired by what we call nature space movement. Uh, and here we can mention also the importance of, um, um, of 3D printing because 3D printing in education in classroom uh, is something that creates excitement. 3D printers offer students the ability to experience the project from the, uh, the model stage to actual creation of the model. And this creates uh, ex both excitement and better understanding of the design process as the game and the experience from um, conception to creation. Um, Complements the curriculum. Um, it can um, uh, elevate students from being uh, passive consumers of information uh, and uh, uh, it gives uh, the possibility to, to become producers. It gives access to knowledge previously unavailable um, because it's uh, a cutting edge technology for students to learn, fun, and play. Um, and uh, students learn that it's uh, uh, also. Here, uh, it's, it's acceptable to fail on the first try and then uh, try again in order to improve. So trial and error is something that's very important and how to uh, accept the culture of failure and transform a failure into a valuable learning experience with this bit, a student's confidence in uh, teachers uh, and enjoys the result of having self-motivated and self-confident uh, students opens up new possibilities for learning and um, some unlimited learning for, for designing, to expand my ideas, to grow uh, creativity and promote uh, problem-solving uh, uh, skills. 
Um, <clears throat> at the same time, it's very important to bring what we call computational thinking in our uh, classroom. Computational thinking uh, involves uh, solving authentic problems, design systems, uh, <clears throat> and understanding human behavior by drawing the concepts of the method of computer science. Uh, why is important? Uh, because uh, it's a, it, in, even in kindergarten, I mean, teachers in kindergarten, uh, many times they teach thinking, but they just don't know that it is computational thinking. For example, when you think about the steps. This way, uh, actually. They teach um, computational thinking. So, uh, when we talk about computational thinking, this has a component. Decomposition, how to solve a problem, what's solving a set of smaller problems, pattern recognition, abstraction, and algorithmic thinking. Uh, at the same time, very important physical computing. Why physical computing? Physical computing is uh, the best tool to combine digital elements with uh, the real world. Um, for instance, when we ask for students to use a in the classroom, to take measurements of humidity or pressure in the classroom, uh, in order to solve the problem, this combines the digital world with the physical world. So physical computing is something very fascinating. We have many uh, devices for this, as Pino said before, Asbury, and many, many um, uh, devices uh, in order to uh, follow this uh, pedagogical stages of learning, um, unplugged, making, thinking, and remixing. And all these uh, are uh, supported by uh, other technologies such as virtual reality, clickers, or keypads, Internet of Things, or Internet of Me, when we have um, a smart uh, clothes or um, smart watches. All these have uh, amazing applications in education or cloud computing that help us also um, simulate and create a world, uh, virtual world. Mobile learning apps, with the message is, uh, some here, um, Quizlet, uh, Udemy, Ted Ed, uh, Let's Read. Here is a project of a primary school students who use Arduino, they created a company and um, they, uh, it's, um, these classes are addressed to uh, children with visual impairment problems. Uh, and after this, uh, they sold this uh, product uh, to community. So we talk about amazing, the amazing uh, with STEM is that in one project to combine, for instance, here at the entrepreneurial skills, because primary school students created the company. Uh, at the same time, STEM education, they use the Duino, and at the same time, uh, community-based learning is another attempt, uh, trend in education. Community-based learning uh, because they reached out to donors and sponsors and parents and they saw the programs. There's, uh, um, there's no, um, actually, um, it's very fascinating to talk always about uh, robotics. Here in Greece, we have many, uh, volunteer teachers who help uh, uh, students excel in robotics, and we have many uh, students who, who, are, who have won the national competitions in robotics. Uh, important to mention the gender STEM based uh, gap. And here I want to show you, for instance, I participated in an innovative pioneering program, STEAM project, which was organized by CERN, the European Organization for Nuclear Research, in particular the CMS particle physics experiment and reinforce experiment uh, program, European program, creation European program. Um, during this uh, program, I, it was very challenging, engaging because I had to teach particle physics to primary school students. Um, so how this happened through STEM education, first uh, through STEM unplugged and, uh, and uh, uh, through technology, through many digital tools, uh, here we used the um, uh, Arduino. Here is a CMS particle detector in CERN. And here are some models with uh, used uh, 3D printing. 
uh, we, you, I think it was 100 hours for printing and 100 hours for assembling. Uh, Globe of Science and Innovation, 3D printing. Um, <clears throat> uh, simulation of CMS experiment with lead flash circuit, the lead laser circuit. Uh, part of the CMS detector using the HP reveal, I mentioned before, tool for augmented reality. Uh, virtual uh, galleries, all these with digital tools, uh, flipbooks. Uh, the Hood mention um, is a model of electric generator with the use of breadboard. Uh, interactive uh, quiz using um, uh, Scratch. Digital <coughs> platform, a whole course of particle physics using the um, flashcards and games. A collaborative canvas uh, when uh, children can post uh, their uh, questions. This is a huge project. It's the creation of three dimensional uh, uh, timeline depicting the history of particle physics from Marie Curie till today, uh, through um, videos, through text, uh, through uh, many um, uh, options. Interactive active exercises using uh, Kubo. And apart from this, I'm the founder of many international STEM projects in um, uh, Africa and Asia um, about gender-based violence, because we try to combine sustainable development goals also and trying at the same time to encourage women in STEM uh, through um, uh, a project that uh, can give uh, students, uh, women, girls, more uh, role models because they need the lack of uh, role models in STEM. Uh, my latest program is about, uh, it's in a STEM project which combines environmental education, STEM and arts. Uh, it's implemented here in Greece, in Greek schools. It's about uh, climate change. I have received 200 awards for this project. And uh, uh, we need also to talk about uh, a little bit how artificial intelligence has the potential to address some of today's pressing educational issues, how it helps us innovate and learning uh, our practices. Um, uh, because um, our intelligence is what makes us human, uh, but AI is an extension of this uh, quality. Uh, and um, as our collective intelligence improves, we begin to create machines that have uh, human-like abilities to learn and make strategic decisions. Of course, we, we may uh, not see human ro robots acting as teachers within the next decade, but uh, there are already many projects in the works that use uh, artificial intelligence uh, to help students and teachers. Uh, so I think that AI is one of the most disruptive uh, techniques to customize the experience of different learning groups of teachers and tutors because it, uh, it's not just transforming the way teachers can do their jobs, it's also revolutionizing the way students learn. And um, how this is uh, happening, how this happens, um, we talk about task automation because uh, we know that uh, teachers don't just teach, teach, they spend time grading tests, evaluating homework, uh, filling the necessary paperwork. So here, uh, artificial intelligence steps in and uh, helps us to, um, to close gaps in learning. It helps to automate administrative tasks. So this opens up more time for teachers to spend with each student. And this gives more potential for AI to create more efficient uh, enrollment and administration processes. Um, we talk about personalized differentiated learning um, because it's a solution to get a universal solution, to, set, uh, to get a set of tools tailored to specific needs of learners and uh, optimize uh, efficiency. Uh, so um, we talk about the custom tailored um, programs Educational software that can be adapted to student needs. Um, and uh, uh, also, uh, we can create uh, smart content creation, digital lessons, which will be updated. We talk about universal access for students. Um, it helps us identify classroom weaknesses to uh, create tutorials and uh, to and support, uh, and offer support of the classroom. Um, and um, um, we give uh, constructive feedback. Uh, AI also can make trial and error learning less intimidating um, and um, also can help uh, change how students find teaching support uh, students. Um, 
For instance, uh, teachers uh, will sample maintain relations. They can assist students who are struggling, uh, uh, provide human interaction. So it's altering actually uh, the way we find interactive information. Uh, for instance, we can through AI we can uh, uh, see the face of a student who doesn't understand um, uh, a concept. So uh, if a teacher sees realizes that. Uh, through the face of the student that uh, uh, there is a problem, this way he can revise um, his lesson. And so uh, this global learning offers new opportunities, new efficiencies. Um, um, and uh, if we want to start implementing AI education, of course, we need to identify the role of AI in, uh, in schools to define uh, all the key processes that uh, uh, the use of AI will automate, to uh, think about the challenges that uh, uh, and how the ways how we will overcome them, uh, how we make the transition process uh, from uh, the whiteboard is, and uh, um, uh, of course, um, uh, we need to find smart ways also to control the outcome of, uh, um, of AI in education. Um, and uh, how this thing we can mention the teaching tutors that already exist with workshops, the translation capabilities, low vision, accessibility, chatbots that are also very um, uh, popular. And for concluding, some examples of AI, uh, education, special recognition software, Aquarium, which um, uh, you say to deliver customizable STEM lessons, it adapts a learning platform. Um, <clears throat> Uh, helps collect data and increase engagement. Uh, and many other kit robots also for special education. Uh, AI is used for special education. Uh, of course, there is a fear of what we call super intelligence, super intelligence that the fear that um, technology will reach at the point uh, when uh, it won't serve uh, uh, humans and humans will become servants. I think it's the biggest fear, also that this will replace uh, uh, kids. But I think that we are not in this stage. I think that uh, it's, uh, it's artificial intelligence is not a threat. We have uh, a, a huge variety of digital tools, ICT tools, that we can leverage in our classroom. So there's no excuse for teachers. <laughs> and uh, I have in my mind uh, Greek teachers who are always complaining about lack of funding, lack of, lack of technological equipment, and all these problems that. Uh, uh, I think that exist uh, um, in uh, schools all around the world, but there's no excuse because there's a wide variety of digital tools that we can um, use. So thank you very much for your uh, attention. For any question, I'm here to discuss. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much for this wonderful session. Sir, am I audible? Yes, audible. Okay, okay. Thank you so much. Yes, thank you, ma'am. Uh, yes, dear faculty members, if you have any doubts, you can ask now. And after that, a group photo will be taken. So please stand on your cameras. If you have any doubts, please. Rania, uh, Professor Rania, mm -hmm. with all these effort, do you think uh, the digital technology has um, occupied its prime position in the education today? Or is it still to penetrate into the mass? Yes, I think that um, we have um, made uh, great steps, at least I'm talking about Greece in using digital tools in classroom, uh, free digital tools. Um, but uh, especially after the COVID pandemic, I think we are forced to experiment and uh, learning new platforms. Uh, so I think that especially blended learning, it's here to stay. And uh, it's something that gives us and opens up the new opportunities for, uh, for us educators to become better. Uh, especially for uh, subjects like uh, language teaching, for instance, when you can be ex extremely creative by using digital um, tools for digital comic, for instance, or for digital storytelling. Um, you can be very, very creative. 
you can use, uh, I think nowadays you can uh, uh, enter the classroom and use a textbook, especially for this kind of subject is unacceptable. I think uh, you will lose, you will lose your students if you still continue uh, using traditional methods. Um, especially nowadays also with uh, STEM education, STEM is the future of education when you can use, even if we don't have technology, I want to highlight this and insist on this. Uh, I worked in uh, some schools uh, very, where uh, there were many students, and the privileged students. We didn't have uh, the possibility always uh, for technology. There was no room for technology. Um, students were coming from a low economic, uh, economic background. And uh, how to teach them? We use them unplugged. We use simply every materials that we can find in our house. So using, for instance, Lego and cardboards, we showed uh, the principles of physics, for instance. We, saw, we created models of physics, particle physics, using simply everyday materials. Uh, I also showed you some projects in Africa, in Malawi, uh, where students didn't have any school supplies. And also, we talk about um, uh, students who have to go uh, to, to walk about 90 minutes to uh, find water to drink. Uh, however, I introduced them activities with natural resources. Students uh, performed water experiments. They did amazing things. They created mind maps using branches of trees, etc. What I'm trying to say is that even if we don't have the possibility of technological equipment, uh, still we can work uh, wonders. If uh, there is a will, there is a way, and if there is a way, there is a key. So I can hear uh, people complaining about lack of funding because these projects that I mentioned have won over 200 awards, and most of them didn't have the use of technology because I, I always work with the privileged children who don't have this possibility. Yeah, it could be fine with the uh, instructor or a mentor and use this data which is available to support them or uh, auxiliary augmented learning or something. But for independent I, learning, do you think the navigators are uh, made good enough so that everybody can reach? Because I'm seeing most of the problems are with the navigation and not the data or the content. Uh, I believe that the teachers need training. Yeah. They won't do it on their own. So yeah. here, for instance, in Greece, we have many um, online um, uh, training seminars and workshops, and especially after the pandemic. And we have also, I don't know if there is in India, something like this, we have a digital, uh, what we call digital school, it's a repository where there are the free softwares and hardware, and teachers upload their, uh, their, um, their projects. So there is a tank actually of educational resources on softwares and any teacher can't upload there. So you can find everything some, uh, there. Uh, but uh, we need training. It is, uh, they won't do it on their own. I'm, I'm absolutely on this. Yeah, See this thank you. Yes, thank you. Yes, um, thank you, ma'am. Yeah, um, Ms. yeah. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, uh, first of all, uh, my apologies for uh, pronouncing your name wrongly when I welcomed you, because um, I think I uh, welcomed you as Raina, which is a much familiar name in India, uh, and Rania is not that common. Um, okay, <laughs> sorry for that. Uh, <clears throat> then um, I just have one question. Uh, you ended up your presentation saying that uh, um, uh, AI is a tool and not a threat. Um, so what came to my mind is something that I read maybe 15, 20 years back when the uh, supercomputer uh, Deep Blue was uh, uh, invented. Um, there was an article in one of the newspapers that said, uh, but Deep Blue, can you make music? That is the title of the article, but Deep Blue, can you make music? So um, <clears throat> isn't it uh, AI, isn't it a threat to the human factor of uh, any process, whether it is education or anything. But what's your take on that? Thank you. No, I believe that uh, this intelligence has already given us many, many new opportunities. I talked about how it helps us with uh, automating uh, our tasks. Uh, so it gives us more uh, uh, time to spend with our uh, students. 
It helps the personalized individualized learning, which is not possible with traditional methods. Um, it uh, helps us also with special, special education needs. It has uh, great, great results. For instance, I mentioned the kid uh, robot. Um, new efficiencies. And uh, um, if, uh, of course, it's up to us uh, how we will use it as educators. Uh, if uh, we have in mind that this only complements and not replace teachers, I think this will have a, a wonderful result. Uh, we should not to fear of uh, what I said before in super intelligence. We should not have this fear that uh, we will become servant of technology. It depend, depends on uh, the use that we will make of technology. Okay, thank you, thank you. Yes, uh, thank you, ma'am. Thank you all. Yes, uh, all participants are requested to turn on your camera. Dear all, please turn on your camera. Okay. Uh, Libison, sir, is it okay? Yes. Uh, who is taking the print screen? Dr. Adida. Sir, it's me. Has it done? Uh, sir, actually, there are four screens. I can catch only one screen at a time. So, yeah, fine. can you wait for? Yeah. yeah, we will wait for a couple of minutes. Meantime, our second speaker is here. Yes, I'm here. Yeah, yeah. So oh. we will uh, begin the session soon, sir. Just a minute. Sir, uh, now also not all the participants have switched on the camera, so. That's fine, whatever, whatever is possible, you take it. Okay, then it's done, sir. Okay, thank you. So, uh, thank you so much, Rania, ma'am, for your uh, for your time for making such a wonderful presentation. And I must thank our Sasikuma sir for organizing for connecting all of us so that we were able to uh, materialize this session. Uh, anyway, we will go to the second session, please. So, sir, um, Chako Rania is coming to India probably in April, Rania. Yes, yes. So you yeah. must visit our campus. We will another four or five months. She is so going please to notify us in. anyway. Okay. So please notify. Please notify us. We will take you to our campus. So uh, let us know your travel plan. It would be a great pleasure to meet you in person. <laughs> Kerala is a beautiful country, Rania, by the way. It's in the, the southwest coast of India. Um, it's actually, the, um, uh, it's like Venice for you. <laughs> yeah, but, but bordered, bordered by the Arabian Sea. <laughs> yeah, let us enter into the second technical session. Sir, before entering to uh, moving to uh, session two, I invite Dr. Tito Abraham, sir, for uh, delivering word of thanks sure. for the first session. Better, uh, Principal uh, Dr. Chako Jospi, uh, Dr. T.P. Shashumar, sir, the man who is instrumental in organizing the today's second FTP program, uh, Dr. Libison KB, the QC coordinator, uh, Dr. Sindo Jacob, the coordinator of uh, San Chavra Center for Teaching Excellence and Education Innovation, and also and uh, the participants who have shown interest to join the today's uh, section, the second FTP program. A warm good evening to uh, everyone. And uh, as we all know that uh, higher education scenario is changing dramatically since the introduction of uh, uh, the new national education policy 2020 and also the pandemic. And the pandemic has completely changed our traditional way of uh, teaching and learning process that happens in the classroom. So we we heard about uh, new terms like a blended teaching, how to incorporate the online uh, teaching strategies uh, to our curriculum. And we heard about like a new ICT tools for uh, teaching and learning process. And mom, uh, we all, the, the participants uh, of today's program, 
have enlightened, have uh, got a chance to uh, know about the new uh, the teaching and learning uh, technologies that is available in the globally. And you have beautifully explained the different ICT tools for presentation and organization series, uh, the free, free video conferencing platforms, the new te teaching for the STEM-based subjects like physics, chemistry, you have beautifully gone through all these topics. And on behalf of uh, the Center Lucius College, and also on behalf of uh, the Center for uh, Chavara Center for Teaching Excellence and Education Innovation, uh, I extend a uh, or heartfelt uh, thank, uh, thank, uh, thankfulness to Dr. Uh, Rania Lampo for sparing us uh, today with your uh, in the midst of your busy schedule and also gracing us uh, with your beautiful thoughts on the ICT tools for uh, uh, teaching uh, and learning process. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Rania, ma'am. Thank you. <laughs> yes, thank you, sir. Best wishes uh, to the next speaker, Dr. Mario. Uh, he's a great friend also. <laughs> Best wishes. Thank you, thank you, Professor Rania. Yes, uh, we are moving on. Uh, technical session two, value-based education by Dr. Mario Luzero. Now I invite Ms. Femi Moni for introducing our resource person. Am I audible? Yes, yes. Okay, fine. A respected principal, Dr. Taco Jospi, uh, our resource person of a second session of FDP, Dr. Mario Z. Luzero, Dr. Libison KB, IQAC coordinator, and uh, Dr. Sindo Jacob, coordinator of St. Chavara Center for Teaching Excellence and Educational Innovations, my dear colleagues and participants from various colleges. A warm good evening to all. I am extremely privileged to welcome our resource person, Dr. Mario Z. Luzero, Principal Springfield School of International Philippines for an international faculty development program for young faculty members of higher education institution. On behalf of St. Aloysius College, El Turut, I welcome Dr. Luzero for a wonderful session on value-based education. Welcome you, sir. Okay, thank you so and also, much. Let me introduce our resource person, Dr. Mario Z. Luzero, is the principal Springfield School of International Philippines and the president leadership in Education Academy and the Development Philippines. His area of expertise are educational leadership and management, curriculum and instruction, human resources, communication arts, ICT tools, research, business education fiscal management and strategic planning. He finished his doctoral of philosophy in education in 2010 from the University of Santo Thomas. He also finished two postdoctoral programs in educational leadership and management and research. He received numerous awards from various institutions and organizations locally and internationally from more than 50 countries across the globe. He is an international world record holder of four international prestigious books of world records. He is known as the global poet for humanity. He served as the ambassador of many organizations in more than 50 countries, country heads of many institutions and organizations and a director of the organizations in Asia and the Southeast Asian countries. He holds 50 honorary doctorates from different colleges and universities abroad and more than 100 honorary doctorates from different international recognized organizations. He has written many research articles and published in refereed journals. He is also a writer and an author. He was named as the King of Education by Macedonian Association. With this brief introduction, I invite Dr. Ma Mario C. Luzero for delivering this session. Please, sir. Thank you very much, Professor, for the generous introduction. Okay, I'd like to thank, of course, Dr. TPS for being instrumental for me to become as your resource speaker. And I'd like to greet you a pleasant evening or afternoon in India. Okay, I'm uh, Dr. Mario Silucero. I'm from the Philippines. Mabuhay to all of you. And I'm very glad that I will be sharing to you, of course, a topic on values-based education. 
So this will not center on religion, it's going to center on faith, but I will be discussing on universal values, the value that we try to subscribe, the value that we try to at least exude as our character. Okay? So I am a principal for 25 years and also involved in many organizations. And as an educator, I would always believe that there must be an integration of values in the teaching and learning process. I know that, of course, you have a different culture. The Philippines also has a different culture. And mostly our population in the Philippines is composed of Roman Catholic. And we only have few Muslims in our country, okay? And different religion. But I also value the kind of beliefs that you have. But if we try to look into the universal values that we have of honesty, cooperation, unity, I think we do understand the language. And that is the very, I think, essence why okay education the educational system should integrate values based education i guess i'd like to share my screen and let me know if my screen is visible is my screen now visible okay is my screen visible uh no <clears throat> no sir um i think yeah, now it is visible. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so, it's visible. Uh, my topic is values based education for sustainable future. Okay. So uh, I think that education okay, is not the preparation for life. According to John Dewey, education is life itself. Okay. So we give meaning to education. Education is a journey. Okay. We do not prepare our students for life because education is life. In school, there is life. In the teaching and learning process, there is life. And most of us here are teachers. Okay. And my question is, are you a teacher by chance? Or are you a teacher by choice? Are you a teacher by force? Or a teacher by accident? Why am I asking you all of this? Because it is really very difficult to become a teacher. Because it is in the intrinsic motivation that we became a teacher. So it's a matter of choice. There might be a lot of profession that we have outside. But we have chosen to be a teacher. But there might be instances that you were forced by your parents. Or maybe you have this particular moment of teaching so it's a chance of meeting students or it's an accident and you have tried to enjoy it so maybe I'll, I'll leave that question to you and you are the right person who could answer that question so how do we look at education so education should not be mere information and stuffing of box it should not be giving information to students okay but it should be drawing out information to learners. And education should not be mere for living. It should not also be confused with knowledge regarding of the material world. So education is basically the actualization of the potential already present in man. So the actualization of that potential that is already present in man. So I, I believe that the learners, the students that we are into, that we are handling, have that innate potential. And that innate potential must be cultivated. So values are embedded in the concept of education. So value education is a tautology. And what is the meaning of that? We try to enhance okay, the value of education. We're giving value into it. And education is already a process of probably forming people or valuing the kind of learners that we have. So value education is a pathology. Okay, so what is values-based education? So it is an approach to teaching that works with values. 
by creating a strong learning environment that enhances academic achievement. So the role of the teacher is to create a learning environment that is full with values. And how do we define learning environment full of values? Probably appreciating our students, developing their talents, building their building good relationships that last throughout their lives. We are making impact to our students. You know, we are a family of educators. I have a sister who's also a teacher. I have a brother who's a principal, another sister who's also a teacher. We have relatives, my nephews and nieces. So I think the blood that runs within us okay, is the blood of a teacher. And looking into that, okay, uh, we are trying to develop learners who are socially um, presentable, okay, acceptable because of the values that we in, that we, we create in the classroom. Of course, we believe that values can be taught, but I would always believe that values is caught. So our students would now try to look into how we act inside the classroom. Well, in the Philippines, we are very blatant in telling words, okay? Sometimes we're very vulgar, okay? But calling the name of the student in a nice way would really mean a lot to the students. And that would create a values-based education. Okay, so another th thing is that it's also a process by which people give moral values to each one, to each and one another. Okay, so students value their teachers, the students value their classmates, mm -hmm. the students value the creation of other students, and therefore we we try to give. Uh, importance of the things that we have in the classroom or even outside the classroom. So explicit value education is associated with those differences in pedagogies, methods of programs that the teachers or educators use in order to create learning experiences. In the Philippines, we have value integration in, in across subjects. Just like for example, when we teach them concept of subtraction, or concept of multiplication, then the teacher must try to inject lessons, okay, value that is associated with addition. So for example, addition, adding, adding polynomials or adding algebraic expression. Then the teacher must connect a lesson wherein students will try to appreciate addition. So it could be something like adding friends, okay, or adding value into your life as a, a person, okay? Or probably creating uh, a community of, of a friendly environment, something like that. So that particular concept of addition can be translated into a value wherein students have learned, okay? The value of educate of the value of addition and also value of other person. So you see, so we create different programs. Um, in our school, okay, I am the principal. So we usually have, uh, we observe values for the month. So for example, in June. And uh, June is our Independence Day. So the value that we subscribe into is the value of freedom. So all the lessons will center on the value of freedom. Okay. And then July. July is... Uh, we celebrate Nutrition Month. So the values that we integrate to our lessons is the value of wellness, okay? Taking care of our, you know, sometimes um, uh, of our body, something like that, okay? The valuing of the self. And in August, we celebrate, of course, uh, another, okay? Uh, we, we call it the... Uh, the month of National Heroes Day, okay? So we, we look into the values of bravery. So there are many programs that we can create in order for the students to be conscious of what value that we are trying to teach them, okay? So 
what are values now? So these are standards or principles guiding thoughts or ac our actions, our feelings and emotions, regulating our power of reasoning. The kind of reasoning that we have is being probably affected by the values that we have. Okay. So if I value, just like in the Philippines, we are very hospitable. And if we value other people, we always welcome them. Okay. In our home, in our community. Okay. So values may be intrinsic coming from within or they might be extrinsic which are being practiced because of what we see. Okay. So coming from within because probably that's what we see. Okay. That's what we feel okay, at home. And we are trying to bring that in the classroom or something that we practice because there are policies. There are rules that we need to follow. There are laws that we need to follow. Okay. So that's also value. Now, I, I'll try to give you examples of intrinsic values. And these are the value of compassion, the value of empathy, kindness, love, mercy, and sympathy, and some other intrinsic values, okay, which would try to origin, okay, originate from within, well, from ourselves, okay? Compassion, empathy, kindness, love. You cannot give love unless you, you experience also love, okay? But, you know, it takes a lot of courage sometimes to exhibit all these things, okay? And what are examples of extrinsic values? This could be punctuality, discipline, obedience, yeah, responsibility, our conduct, our character. So for example, when we have meeting, then we value punctuality. That is an extrinsic values. Because if you're not punctual, probably in attending meetings or submitting all the requirements, there might be the merits or deduction, penalties, something like that. Discipline, okay? The rules that we follow, of course, being obedient to something, to our superior, okay? So uh, those are examples of extrinsic and intrinsic values. And why do you think values are important? Because they act as guidelines and they tell one what ought to do and what not ought to do. So these are the things that you would do. These are the things that you don't or you should not do. Okay? So this would uh, probably explain our belief system. Okay? Of course, there are things that we do which you don't do in India. And there are things that you do in India that we also don't do here in the Philippines. Something like that. Okay, so another importance of values is that by determining one's thoughts, actions, emotions, and reasoning, values constitute a person's identity and character. The way we talk, okay, the way we express ourselves, okay, the way we reason out, that comprises or probably demonstrates our own identity, our own character our own values, which sometimes that becomes our destiny, our options in life, our choices in life. That is, I think, um, the very essence why values education is very important. Okay? You might not be explicitly explaining that these are the values that you teach to students, but students can absorb it. So values bring quality and meaning to life. Making us realize that what we are is more important than what we have. So you see, what we are is more important than what we have. Because what we have, we cannot carry that when we meet our creator. But what we are can be remembered by the people whom we have touched. Okay, The people whom we have probably taught. The people whom we have inspired, okay? So very important. So it, another is that if education encompasses values, then what is the need for value education? 
why is the tautology concept given ground and popularity? Because education has forgotten its true nature and moved away from values. That values should always be integrated in the process of educating people. Okay? So, another, okay, we generally repeat the word again and again if we have to hammer on something. So repetition acts as a, re a reminder. So values education is used to harp on the world value to remind education that it ought to include values of it. So to remind education of its forgotten identity. So values education is very important in order for us to remind education for its forgotten identity. Okay. Now, uh, the, what is the role of education? If that is the role of values, then what is the role of education? So awareness is to be built regarding the importance and urgency of changing the present educational system. So the present educational system should always look into integrating values. Well, I had appreciated uh, the presentation of my friend, good friend, Professor Rania, when he said ICT in education is very important. Okay. Well, technology is there not to replace teachers because teachers still have the, the human touch, still have the heart. Okay. But, you know, sometimes computers sometimes are more loving okay caring when they would respond to some of you know uh to our answers they would be uh, politely say very good your answer is correct excellent the computer would answer that when you click on a very good or very correct answer computer would say excellent you got it right perfect but we humans sometimes forget those things of appreciation to our students so what I'm now trying to say is that, of course, technology will not replace the teachers. We are here to use technology, okay? But again, okay, we must change the present situation in education to always integrate values. Innovative and enjoyable devices are to be adopted to provide a platform for embracing a value-based education. So you see, Enjoyable devices, uh, augmented reality, artificial, artificial intelligence. Of course, with AI, okay, we're talking to human robots, okay. But these are programmed, okay. You program, uh, someone had programmed the robot to answer it that way, okay. And you can always program a robot to become a person full of values, okay? But again, I think the one who programmed that is a person also full of values. So you see? Okay. Now, if we already have learned values, education, okay? And also the role of education. So what is a values-based school? What is now a values-based school? So a values-based school seeks to promote an education philosophy and practices based on valuing self, others, and environment through the consideration of values, vocabulary, okay, principles like okay, your behavior or as the basis of good educational practice. So I think most schools have their own mission, okay? They have their own vision. They also have their core values. And these core values are the guiding principles, okay, that guide the behavior of the students. So, for example, your school is Saint Aloysius, okay, college, okay, and I think you are guided by the Aloysian principle, okay, the values of Saint Aloysius. I was a graduate of. When I was in college, I graduated from a St. Paul University, okay? So we are guided by the Paulinian, okay? From Saul, the Apostle Saul, who became Paul, okay? The Paulinian 
kind of philosophy. And when I took my PhD and, uh, of course, and my master's, again, in a Catholic university, at the University of Santo Tomas, we were guided by the Thomasan principle. So we look into the critical thinking of our students. So it is very important that we have to create a values-based school. So a way of conceptualizing education that places the search of meaning and the purpose of the heart of educational process. It recognizes that the recognition, word and integrity, all of the, all involved in the life and word of the school are central to the creation of values-based learning community that fosters positive relationship and quality education. Okay, so that's it. Now, according to some research, okay, undertaken at Oxford universities, um, we must have effective teachers of values, okay? Self-reflective work of teachers is seen to have powerful impact to pupils. So the uh, works of teachers have powerful impact for our pupils. So um, there must be teachers who would develop, you know, reflection, mindfulness, meditation activities as a way to control our pupils. And I know uh, one school in, in Europe who introduced mindfulness activities. And I know India is also using meditation, reflection to guide our students so that these students will behave well. So it's just a matter of preparing our students to become uh, active or engaging learner, okay? Uh, another is that, of course, uh, teachers describe their own positive behavior as walking their talk to living their values. So you see, we must walk the talk. So in conclusion, Values education must begin with adults before introducing it to pupils and making it integ integral part of the curriculum. So to sum it up, okay, for a values-based education to become meaningful in school, we must have a good understanding about what is the role of value, okay, of values education. And also, use this particular concept, integrate it to lessons, okay? And teachers must be able to subscribe into it so that students, okay, would be able to learn, okay? And be able to absorb the values that they are expected to manifest in the classroom and in the community. So I think I have shared something to you. Uh, thank you so much. And uh, I hope that uh, in the future, I will also be given again another chance to share something, okay, our experiences. So in the Philippines, we created our own model of values integration. We have a subject called values education. We also have Christian living in the Philippines as a subject. But in the junior high school, in the senior high school, we have values education okay, as a subject in grade 7, grade 8, grade 9, grade 10, which is co-equal to other subjects like English and mathematics. So uh, we develop the universal values that we are expected for students, of course, valuing the self, valuing the community, and a lot more, okay? Being responsible citizen, care for the environment, and so forth and so on. Now that we are facing a lot of phenomenon, probably we, we try to uh, enhance or strengthen our values program so that we are ready probably to embrace whatever challenges that we have in the future. So with that, thank you so much for allowing me to share something to the teachers of St. Aloysius. And I'd like to thank Dr. TPS uh, for inviting me to this platform, the school administrators, also to Professor Rania, to all of you. Thank you very much, Mabuhay, from the Philippines.
थैंक यू yes thank you sir thank you so much for this valuable insights dear participants you can clarify your doubts now and don't forget to fill the feedback form of session 1 and session 2 separately shared in the chat box dear faculty members please clarify your doubts professor mario uh, thank you and glad um the teachers are not from the the one college it's it's the college is organizing and teachers from different departments of india are oh, participating okay. in the program yeah. yeah basically for teachers who are freshers probably some 2 years 3 years experience and few of the senior faculties are also there yes. okay okay yeah good nice thank you Thank you, thank you for that clarification. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I think there are no questions from the participants. But uh, thank you so much. Of course, um, I I don't know how how you integrate values in the classroom, but I think. you have a better way of doing it in india okay because of course number one uh, what what we try to uh, practice here in the philippines is um the value of reflection okay which i think uh, you you observe that and also meditation so um sometimes we have some cooling sessions with our students okay probably a 2 minute cooling session and uh, they are uh, given uh, some time to inhale and exhale okay and uh, we always of course at uh, at home we have some uh, values also to subscribe into okay and i think uh, what i'm learning now is just to be sometimes in touch with social media before uh, going to bed at least an hour and that a value that we have to look into so that number one we develop the value of communicating to the members of the family sometimes i also uh, i don't feel good that in the in the uh, in the family at home we're holding our cell phones we're not communicating with one another because we're busy you know looking into the messages mm -hmm. so i think that's the value that we should uh, not the value but that something a behavior that we should correct okay? in the philippines thank you yeah as you said um, mario uh, professor mario here in india uh, we categorize teachers as the content delivery people uh, that is uh, no the normal teachers and probably who gives a vision they have a different name and looking at them if you like to follow them like the role model or mentor they have different name so it's not just uh, teachers the teachers are categorized into different uh, ways so actually the value education should come from the highest who is called an acharya the word is called acharya acharya is one looking at him you feel that yeah this uh, this teacher is great i want to be like him so they follow him right he need not teach people learn from him without having classes because his life itself is a lesson right and the next category where you guide them to um, by lessons and telling them value uh, such people are called guru g u r u guru the first one is acharya a c h a r a y a acharya and the another one who delivers content is called adhyapak or adhyapaka his job is only teaching uh, that means we categorize class which uh, education into two pieces one is uh, savidya vidya is education savidya and avidya uh, savidya is where you give value education avidya is what you give skill development for your livelihood so our education in india was always the avidya and savidya combined it says it has to be together otherwise you are not making human being or social being okay it's good to know okay i've learned something from that yeah 
but of course there are also categories in the Philippines. Okay, but we uh, uh, categories would uh, probably be different also. Okay, just like us. But I think uh, there is a uniqueness from the categories that you presented. Thank you very much, Professor Doctor TPS. Yes, thank you, sir. Now I invite Miss Julia K. Abraham for delivering both of them. Good evening, everyone. On behalf of Central Asia Scholars and the this opportunity to propose sort of thank. Excuse me. Yes, ma'am, you are audible. Please continue. On behalf of Central Asia Scholars and the I take this opportunity to propose a word of thanks to all who have directly and indirectly contributed to this faculty development program, especially the session on value-based education. St. Javara Center for Teaching Excellence and Educational Innovation pursues the vision of equipping the stakeholders of higher education for the new digital world. While education is an inevitable aspect of this, I take this opportunity to express my heartfelt gratitude on behalf of our college and all the participants here to Dr. Maria Silasro for spending your valuable time and energy to be a part of this endeavor. Sir, it is very, very, very much informative and you explained the importance of value-based education in the curriculum. We are greatly enlightened and inspired by your session. Thank you very much, sir. Yes, I finally. Okay, continue, ma'am. I also take this moment to thank the management, the respected principal, Dr. T.P. Shashikumar, and the organizing committee for making make this session systematic and fruitful as it can be. I'm also grateful to everyone for his being present here. And finally, thank you, everyone. Yes. Yes, finally, we have reached the end of our session. Once again, uh, thank you all. Thank you so much, uh, respective principal and our most valued invited guest, all the participants. Our sincere thanks to all. Thank you so much. Uh, excuse me, ma'am. Uh, no. Session to feedback uh, link is not working. Please check. Uh, okay, sir. We'll do the needful. Sorry for the inconvenience. Okay. Thank you. Okay, sir. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Rania. See you soon. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Maria. Yeah. Thank you, uh, Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Feedback from Mangi certificate. I got the second feedback from the now. The farm is successfully open, ma'am. Dear participants, kindly check our chat box. The problem is character. We can do the feedback from now. Yeah. 
Participants, you may leave now after filling feedback form. And if you have any problem while filling the feedback form, you can contact us through the mail ID, which already shared in chat box.
हम सके रिवाइज करें क्या चुप कर